your Locked On Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Uh, I don't really think there are any expectations. You know, for us, it's, it's bringing the group together. It's the only time throughout the season we get to have all of our prospects here. And so for us, it's about getting to know them a little bit better and getting to see that what they do well, what they can do better. Just the interaction amongst our staff to with them is a lot of times we go to see them play. You spend five minutes after a game with them and then they're going off to their thing and you've got to get to the next city. So we get to spend four or five days with them, eat, have lunch, dinner, you know, just the interaction and the communication from our staff to them is fantastic at this time. And I, I love it because this is like our Stanley cup you know, from a development standpoint. So we uh, really look forward to these days with them. I think one of the last times we spoke to you was after the Jersey Ripper, I believe. We talked a lot about Will, but obviously no one's back right here. What do you know about him? What excites you the most about this guy? I mean, the competitiveness in him. What about that? Do you just are you excited? Well, I, the first thing that I notice is that he wants to be first in everything. So the first day we – you know, after breakfast, they go outside for a little activation warm up. He's leading his group right away. He's first in line. Then you see him on the ice. He's first in the drills. Those things you don't teach. I can't go to a player and say, hey, you should be first in line. They just instinctively have that. Right. And then you watch how he plays on the ice or you watch him in the gym. The first day after development, the uh, first day on the ice, he was in the gym riding the bike and then he had a little workout. He said, I just want to get a little extra. You can't teach that. He just has it in him. That's his personality. So, um, you know, it's a it's a pleasure to, to work with players like that because they want it. That you don't have. You're just kind of molding them a little bit. They've got the, the the nuts and bolts of what they're going to be, and now it's just kind of helping them put it all together. And you know, the one uh, the one day I got a chance to actually give him a ride back to the hotel. We were just talking about the what are the things that he's going to have to overcome at the next level. You know, and <laughs> I, I love that because it's like he's looking at me as a, someone that he can lean on. And that's what I always tell all the players. It's like, yes, you have your, your family and you, your, your mom and your dad and you got your coaching staff, but you can't tell me that between Patty and Jumbo and Reach and Tommy and Luca and Nicholas Sundstrom that we haven't seen just about every possible scenario on in, in the NHL. So use that, you know, ask questions. You know, it's, there's never any, never a bad question. You saw it out there. I mean, dev camps have continued to evolve. They always evolve. But you saw that out there. This was different. I mean, a little different. What do you make of Max Effect? Just you saw the scene, the crowd, the atmosphere. He's, he's given a buzz back to the San Jose Sharks organization. You know, the last couple of years have been tough, but he's given that, oh, there's a little, there's light at the end of the tunnel. You know, it's starting to open up. And, you start to adding the other players along with it. Um, you know, the Will Smiths, the Casper Helton, the Quentin Musties, the, the Dickinsons, all these guys that, you know, are really good hockey players. You start putting that pool together and it starts to get exciting again. And I had the same feeling when I came over to the building for warm up today. And I was like, I kind of felt like I was playing again. That's the excitement that I got. And the crowd was fantastic on the 4th of July at 1130 in the morning. And the game didn't disappoint. I mean, I couldn't have scripted it any better. You know, you think that Team Teal is going to walk away with it, and all of a sudden they find a way to get back into it. It's just – it makes everybody leave the, 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 the camp. And on a good note, on a positive note, the players are buzzing over in the workout room after. Um, and they become part of – these prospects become part of their own family. You know, they kind of bond together. And you see uh, – I t- heard Jay Mack talking about how you see guys from – Sweden hanging out with guys from Canada and U S it's that's what, what happens. And, and, and that's, that's the start of the process. So Todd, when you look back, think back to you, when you did your development camp, coming in as a player, what similarities did you see this time around with these kids coming in? When I did develop camp? Yeah. I didn't do develop camp. <laughs> that's how old I am. We had, uh, when I started, we didn't, there was no development camps. We did, uh, Training camp, we had did two a days. So the veterans went on the we went all went on the ice in the morning, and the veterans went and played golf, and the rookies <laughs> went back on the ice in, in the afternoon. Um, but I I love like I look back to my career like I didn't ever have I never talked to anybody in a development standpoint. It was like you kind of leaned on the veteran guys in the locker room, 
So I really enjoy this part of it because you kind of feel like, you know, going back to my Anaheim days when we had the players and I, I look at, you know, I texted Brandon Montour, Josh Mahura, guys when they won the cup because I'm happy for them. I saw last rookie camp. I saw Shea Theodore and, and Will, William Carlson after they won the cup. I just, I'm happy for them and see how they, they've evolved in their career. And you kind of feel like you just had a little part in that. not at that age you know like sometimes it's the guys are a little bit older but not at that age and 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 he handles everything with just it's like easy for him you know he came off the ice the last couple of days and he's got a bunch of people and he's not a you know signs autographs the other the other night we went to the baseball game and you know people want autographs he takes the time to sign it's just it's the it's just these players only come around once in a lo- in a lifetime really they're very they're very special and you know i mean i I talked to his mom and dad at the draft, and I, I just said, you guys have done an amazing job, amazing job raising this person, and this, this individual, because he is special, and he's going to be special. And, you know, we're just happy that, that he's going to be in our organization for a long time. I don't think we're, anybody's ever ready. <laughs> um, you know, he's going to have to figure that part out. He's going to have to, you know, again, we had this conversation, and I said, you know, a little thing that you cannot get on the wrong side of somebody in the neutral zone. And it doesn't matter who it is because they're going to – you think that you're a great skater. They're going to fly by you because they're bigger, stronger, faster, and you're going to have to get up to that. You're going to have to make sure when you're in the defensive zone you've got to be on the right side of somebody because they're going to spin off and take it to the net. And next thing you know, you're going to be in the penalty box or it's going to be in the back of your net. So these are all the things that you have to learn, but they're not – they want to learn. They, they're like sponges. They just want to listen and they want to absorb it, and they're going to try and put it into their game, which is it's – a, it's a great start. I know it was uh, three on three there. Obviously, but uh, had that comeback, and it looked like Matt fed off of that. Like, sorry, it's like building. And he, did you get that vibe? Yeah, he just kind of sees, sort of sees the moment. We we saw, I saw it at the World Juniors this year. I think it was the quarterfinal game. They ended up losing the game, but it was like, let's go, like follow me, and you just saw it again today. You saw it. it's like he just he didn't want to come off the ice. Well, why would you take him off the ice first off? But he didn't want to come off. He wanted to be a part of that process. And then this is a development camp scrimmage in July, but he wanted to be a part of that 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 process. And you you love players that want to play in the, the big situations. You want players that want the, the responsibility and the pressure because they thrive off of it. And he is one of those guys. Uh, Put you on his spot a little bit here. Uh, so... Obviously. Not you, Shang, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously, maybe no one is ever ready for NHL, but we talk about how impressive Macklin is as an 18-year-old. Is he as ready as you've seen an 18-year-old perhaps be ready? I'm, I'm trying to think of how many 18-year-olds I got to play with. <laughs> I played with Cam Fowler uh, as an 18-year-old. He made the team out of camp, and you know he, he played the rest of the year. Um, but I, I don't think that... I mean, I, I never played with McDavid or Crosby, those guys. Like, it's – he's a special player. He's a he's a special individual. And, again, I take aside the hockey part of it. I just like the way he carries himself. He carries himself with confidence, not cockiness, and with class. And I think that, that what that does is it resonates amongst your group. And, you know, the, the, the rest of the group is going to want to be with him and follow him, the Will Smiths and all these other guys that – are really good hockey players too, but they're going to want to be a part of that process because when you when you get this many good young players together, it's exciting. Speaking of that learning, speaking of that learning aspect, um, you mentioned that this is a chance here, these three days here for you to be able to spend more time with them and learn. Just anybody surprise you, or you want something surprising about somebody in this last few days? That you can no, I, I like. I don't. I don't even evaluate the players. Like I know everything. Well, well, yeah. I, I don't. I don't do any evaluation in this. This is summer hockey for us. I put them on the ice because they want to be on the ice. But as you know, it's it's, you know, like J Max said, they they were on the ice twice a day before we got here. Now it's like we only go on for forty five to fifty minutes because it's July. I we spend more time in the gym learning that part of it. So they want to be a part of that process of being on the on the ice, but. 
I, I look at it as just, this is information for us to get to, to know them and to, you know, create that bond so that the next time we see them, you know, it's like the, the familiar face that they know from development camp. Take a few more here. Not to slight somebody like Logan or any of the other captains on the team, but we've talked about how much the Mac is like a, almost not to say fall in line, but they're, they're led by Mac. There's lots of talk with Logan, wherever he's in the injury, whatever. I mean, do you see Macklin as a potential next capital Santa Luis Sharks? It's above my pay grade. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that? In no, but I, I just see the way he carries himself, the way that, like I said, the, the, the little things that he does. You know, the being first, all that sort of that that is leadership quality. Now, whether it means that there's going to be a letter on his jersey or not, I mean that's that's for Mike and the coaching staff to decide. But um, you know, you see that I saw that quality in Scott Niedemeyer, right? I mean, he won everything, but you talk about a guy that worked harder than everybody in practice, Scott Niedemeyer did. And then you see that with somebody like Mac. Smith a little bit. I mean, he's getting ready for his first main training camp so he's over here. What do you want to see from him? What are you, what are you telling him about how to get ready for that camp? What, what's the best way to for him just to make sure he's, he's where he needs to be for, for that? Yeah, he's like most of the players at his age is that, you know what, and I we, we talked about this a little bit before because in years past, you, you look at him like last year. He goes from the combine to the draft to development camp, to the World Junior Summer Showcase, to school. And there's just no time. Like, they're, they're still training, but they're not. He has two months. We talked about this. You have two solid months to really get in the gym and get bigger and stronger because that's what most of these kids need. They need to be, get bigger and stronger so that they can compete with the men in the NHL. It's a tough league. They're, they're these, these guys, they play hard, you know, and – but you look at a guy like Will Smith, you look at his skill set, you look at his hockey IQ. We were talking about him today. The one play, he brought the puck in. As soon as he got by the guy on the defenseman, he was going around the net. We could see from where we were sitting, he had his head up the whole time. He was looking the whole time, what, where's the, where are the guys that are open? That's hard to teach. It's just an instinct for him. So um, bigger, stronger, get in the gym, and then that, that'll really lead to confidence on the ice. Sharks, obviously, uh, well, a guy like Weinberg. Yeah, have a variety of guys who could play either the center or the wing. With Will, I mean, is it, if he has to play the wing, I mean, is that a major adjustment for him? No, it's a, it's a bigger adjustment to try to go from wing to center. Going from center to wing is not as, as big adjustment as um, it is going the other way. Um, but I I firmly believe that he, he they're both going to be centermen in this league. And you know what? Sometimes you got to learn by being thrown in the fire a little bit. You know, you got to learn – you're going to have to get beat out of the corner to learn that, hey, guess what? I've got to be on the right side so that I, I don't get caught. So that's all part of the process. So how about any uh, Pagnoni and maybe a couple other guys that are hoping to make the Barracuda this, this year? What yep. do you see out of those two in particular? Maybe anybody else kind of in the kind of that, that realm of, of prospect that's hoping to make that jump to pro hockey that they need to kind of work on in the next couple of months. Yeah, Casper, you know what? He had a great year in London. Started out slow, but then he finished strong. You know, Casper, it's about, um, you know, he dropped some dropped some weight. So he, he dropped uh, actually 10 pounds, I think he dropped, which was great for him. So it allows him to be a little quicker on the ice. He's going to have to continue to work on that, He's gonna t- continue to work. It's like a broken record. I hate to say that, but it's like, you know, get in the gym and get, get that man strength, right? Same with Luca. You know, Luca had a great season, but now he's going to have to try and play against men, guys that are 10 years older that have been playing for a long time. So navigating that process, right? You're not going to have as much time as you had in junior. You're not going to be able to try and beat somebody one-on-one with nobody behind you. You got to make that play. You got to make that play of the guy up open and get, you know, play a give and go game so that you're not do- putting yourself in bad spots. So that's all part of the curve for them. Um, you know what? They've got a great challenge if I'm, you know, they're going to leave here. They're going to go home. What are we going to see like when they come back? Are they going to be better than they were in development camp? Because I have the numbers, and when they come back, I'm going to compare them to what they were here. And if they they need to go up, and if they don't, then that what's going to happen is they're not going to be as good on the ice. And what's going to happen is they're going to have to go back to junior. And nobody wants to go back to junior, but you know what? You have to make it hard on us to keep you. Casper, that those ten, that's from last development camp, right? The ten pounds. Yeah, yeah. No, and and even during the season, like you know, he he 
he mentioned that World Juniors, he was heavy. He felt he didn't feel good. And when he went back to London, they talked. We talked to Lund with Mark Hunter and Dale, and and he started doing extra rides and runs when the team wasn't doing anything. And he's, I think, he's down to two hundred eight, which is fantastic. He and he has, he's going to have to do that. We we talked to him about that. Everybody has a different body type, and unfortunately, this is what yours is, and you're going to have to maintain that by doing the extra work. But you do it, guess what? You'll reap the benefits because he's got a world class shot, right? We saw it today. Uh, we, we, we talk a lot about celebrating and stuff, but you had six first round picks on the ice today between Beeston, Edstrom, uh, Smith, Musty, Celebrini, and Jacobson. What's that like for an organization to have just such a high end, hopeful, such high end picks like all together at once? Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it makes my job a lot easier, right? But these are players that are motivated. They're dedicated. They get it. You tell them once and they understand. Um, and not to say that a fourth rounder or a fifth rounder doesn't, but these guys are, they want to play in the national hockey. They, and they, and they understand what needs to, what the work that needs to go into it. So for us, it's, and for my staff, it's, it's phenomenal. And, and eventually, you know, it's going to continue to roll that way. I and mean, all of a sudden, before you know it, we're going to have all these guys playing for us and here in San Jose with the Barracuda or with the Sharks. And next thing you know, like, Again, then they're going to have that other obstacle that they're going to have to overcome, right? To be able to become not just play in the NHL, but have success in the NHL. And it takes time, but you put the work in, you'll see the results. Thank you so much. All right.